Hello everyone, and welcome back to DCS World, where I'm going to do some F-14 carrier landing practice. I had previously done a session of landing practice on Twitch as a live stream. That didn't go so well, but I did ultimately figure out how to land on the carrier. And here, I will just listen to what the guy has to say. I hope you studied the briefing diagram prior to the flight. Case 1 is the visual landing procedure in fair weather and is very similar to the FCLP pattern you used previously. Only difference being the size of the landing area and the arresting gear. Your reel will help you with the checklist. You are lined up on the initial to the boat with your wings swept and the HUD in landing mode. Maintain 800 feet and 350 knots. As in the previous tutorial, a series of gates will help to guide you in the pattern. The carrier will be stationary, but with a strong wind down the deck. If you want, lower the hook for an arrested landing. Or keep it raised if you want to make multiple attempts without traffic. So I'm letting you see what this tutorial is like and uh, what the guy has to say, the guidance that we are given. You can see the gates as well. Uh, this is fairly okay, easy as far go. as setups are concerned. Bank left, extend the speed brake, bank left 45 to 60 degrees, and maintain about a 3G turn at 800 feet. Remember, wing auto at 280 knots, wheels down at 250, and flaps down at 225 knots. Extend your DLC and steadily descend so that you reach 600 feet on the downwind. Try to maintain on-speed AOA, the yellow donut on the AOA indicator, or the key bracket around the reference point in the HUD. Maintain 600 feet. Landing checklist. Wing sweep, 20 degrees, auto. Wheels, uh, three down. SAS, on, flaps, pull down. DLC, checked, hook, down, harness, lock, speed brakes. Extended, brakes, check, fuel, 4.1, checklist complete. Okay, so as you can see, I was a little bit sloppy coming in, and uh, altogether I don't really follow the gates perfectly. Bank left between 27 and 30 degrees, maintain on-speed AOA, and descend at about 300 feet per minute. Ideally, you want to get 450 feet at the 90, and enter the groove at 360 feet. Okay, so here is where we'll pick it up in subsequent attempts because I don't have to show you all that business again. I'll fly sort of so sloppily through those initial gates as you saw there and ultimately come to this point. And this is the important part as we line up with the carrier and make the landing attempt. And so I'm not going to belabor the rest of the traffic pattern basically. And there are a few things that we're looking at here. Uh, the indicator on the left side of the HUD. Sorry, I didn't actually talk while attempting the landing one practice. One that would one have one probably one have been one. ambitious of me to do. I want to try and focus and take it seriously. But the angle of attack indicator, which is also right below it, and of course the information on the HUD. And just visualizing where the carrier is. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to work out very well. You could probably tell by the way I'm swaying one side and the other side, but this was the first time I tried it uh, since my Twitch practice. The guy thinks that I've actually landed it. It's sort of sad, really. But yeah, that did not work out so well. And I need a little bit more... Well, that's what practice is all about, right? Well, on this go-round, I basically stalled. Uh, right about here so that too is possible uh, basically uh, during this whole turn it's very close to stalling out and it's very hard for it to recover if you push it too far I think I banked too much there and lost too much speed and that killed the lift but anyway here we go again Incidentally, prior to this game, the last time I had regularly tried to land on a carrier in a game was probably Flight of the Intruder in 1990. So it's been a while. It's been a while. This is uh, basically starting fresh for me. I, of course, I have reasonable experience trying to land on runways. Uh, and I did do the runway practice with the F-14 beforehand, but this is somewhat more harrowing. Though, getting a little bit closer on this approach than on the previous ones. To be honest, I feel like DCS World is actually pretty forgiving on the carrier landings, and you'll see that in this video. Not this time, though. 
Not this time. Poof. But after that, I think I more or less got the hang of not killing myself. Uh, I, I covered the range of things that I could do to mess up, basically. Um, falling short, yes. Uh, stalling on the final turn, yes. So at this point, it sort of becomes a drinking game, maybe. Uh, whether I go around or whether I actually one, land one, successfully. One, which is a heck of a lot better one, than the alternate way. drinking Eleven game where one, either one, I survive one, the attempt one, or I one, crash. Ball, line up, angle of attack. But as long as it's just the two options where I go around or I land, that's good enough to run missions with. You know, the last thing you want at the end of the mission is to attempt to land on the carrier and crash into the ocean instead. That's not going to work out. That's not going to be very pleasant. I haven't really made a study of the F-14's weapon systems yet, so that'll be next up after... I think I'm satisfied by the end of uh, this practice that I have a basic notion of how to land on the carriers or at least survive the attempt. And uh, so next will be the weapons and then after that I think I can run missions though that would still be leaving out the most difficult thing that you can do which is probably uh, mid-air refueling. That might take some that I'll play, take a lot more practice, I think. Uh, so yeah, that's a special challenge. But at least the fast missions, you know, it's about time I did some proper fast missions and attempted to shoot things down in ECS world. I really haven't done much of that. So yeah, that'll be good to get into finally, especially with the F-14. But here we go again. Will I make it? Ooh. Now, that appears well really done. far left, obviously, but it worked. And, uh, of course, technically you're supposed to throttle up right at the end. That's why those air brakes are out and they're not going to retract, really. Um, but yeah, that one worked. But, as you can see, a little bit forgiving there. It doesn't seem to work very well if you're too much further right, that's for sure. I had uh, occasions where I had to go around because I was too far right. And I think we'll see one later on. But here we go again. I'm consistently low on the glide slope. Whenever I uh, try and go much higher than where I'm at right now, I feel like I come in with way too much velocity, so... I'm much more comfortable cheating a little bit low on that. I think part of it is like the viewpoint. I feel a little bit high in the cockpit to be honest. And no, I'm gonna have to go around on that. Yep, no, that's not good. Now, as I understand it, actual Navy pilots take pride in which wire they actually catch, but uh, at this point, I'll take any arrestor wire. That's, that's probably the way to go for now. I'll have to try a higher approach later. I, I think I'm slightly nudging myself up with each subsequent attempt, but still uh, low in the boxes, as you can see. Obviously, after this, I'll have to try it out without uh, the training mission and just do it try and land on the carrier without the guidance, if you will. Though, honestly, lining up ahead of time is not the big deal. I can do that just fine. That comes from landing on runways as well. Uh, okay, we caught it that time. Uh, apparently we caught the two-wire. And actually on the kneeboard, we can check the flight path and it shows the two wire caught there. I wasn't really in the correct flight path for very long. I think that says like 30 odd percent. 
And I didn't get a grade, apparently, which is troubling. So, I'm not doing this particularly well. Yeah, oh, this is way off. Uh, try to get back up there without stalling, of course. The problem with the kneeboard information is uh, every time I look at it, I tend to overcorrect in the other direction. Uh, yeah. So if I end up being a little bit short according to the kneeboard, I overcorrect high and then, or at least fast. I can't say I'm going that high at this point. This I'm wiggling all over the place. Line up, angle of attack. Do not flare the aircraft, and remember to power up when touching the deck in case you miss the wire and have to. Okay, it. place your bets. Uh, it was lined up pretty well, but obviously I didn't get it down particularly well. I hope you're up for one more. Uh, yep, we are. There is a user-created carrier landing practice available on the forums. I forget uh, who posted it, but um, it's quite a bit stricter. It'll force you to go around uh, properly instead of like picking up. I, I just after I miss the carrier, I go around. I just pick up the little boxes right away. I make a turn immediately to the left. It doesn't let you do that, and it's got a uh, more sophisticated points. Well, I don't know. The kneeboard is pretty good. And it does seem to be willing to give me a grade if I actually do it reasonably well. And so it does have more feedback. But uh, yeah, that one I found, the user create one is a little bit more difficult. And yeah, I'll have, well, at least where it decides that you haven't done it right, it's a little bit stricter. So for further practice, that's an option. This one sometimes tells you that you've landed on a carry even if you're in the middle of the water. So, that's not good. Well, that's not gonna work. Nope. And I'm really slow to throttle up again. That's something I need to fix. Though, so far, that aspect has not hurt me. I do not end up in the water after missing. Okay, this so far looking a little bit higher. I'm shading down a bit, a little bit more in the center of the boxes. It's good. Okay, well, does that give us better results as far as actually landing on the deck? Lots of roll. That's not good. Oh, but it looks like we caught a wire. Well, Rio did not say that I caught a wire though. And if we take a look at the trap sheet there, it doesn't actually fill in a little bubble on one of the wires, so I don't know exactly what happened there. I certainly didn't get a grade. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that since it didn't actually fill in one of the spaces for the wires. Did I stop some other way? I mean, presumably the only way I would stop like that is if I actually caught a wire, right? So I don't, I don't really understand what happened there. Basically, every time I practice this, I have sort of a quota, and so this is the last one, the last landing I have to check off. Let's see how many times it's gonna take me to manage it. Friendly, eleven o'clock. This time we we're mile. a little bit lower. Oh no, that's that's about in the center of that one. Now I should point out that I'm not using DLC very much to direct lift control, and that's mainly because uh, most of my mistakes are very coarse, and that's more of a fine-tuned sort of deal. Also, there's no 
uh, easy reference in this view what position the DLC is in right now. And I like that information if I'm going to be tweaking it all over the place. Oh, well, that was just all over the place, wasn't it? Uh, I do have it mapped uh, to two of the joystick buttons. Uh, I need more practice using that, uh, but that it it seems like it's more of a fine-tuned sort of thing, and uh, I'm not in a fine-tuned sort of place right now. So, yeah, I think on airliners and other applications, the DLC was actually automated, but uh, and obviously this is the first time in a simulator that I've ever had to think about it manually, and. I'm having enough trouble, you know, making sure I'm not under throttle or over throttle as it is. So I'm not really controlling the DLC very much. Anyway, here we go again. And let's see if I can wrap it up here. We're coming in a little bit fast here. Actually a lot fast, a lot faster than the other attempts. Ooh, oh. Uh, well, we stopped, but we are sort of tilted to one side, aren't we? Yeah, I collapsed the right landing gear. I didn't know how to take that, whether I should try again, but I decided I should probably quit at this point. So, checking the trap sheet on the kneeboard, of course, I did not get a grade. It also didn't indicate which wire I snagged again, so... Yeah, don't know what to make of that. But anyway, I flipped through the rest of the kneeboard pages, and there's a lot of stuff on kneeboard. Very underrated, I need to take more look at that. But... At this point, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.